All right, hello and welcome. This is Aaron with Steel Picking. Uh, in this video lesson, we're going to do uh, maybe a little bit different format, and it's going to be something new for us here at Steel Picking. I'm going to show you some tabs that I used to use a long time ago, and I'm going to use this as a different way, or maybe another way to help you learn your fretboard. And this one, uh, this lesson's going to be on the C6 neck. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this up and uh, let Jacob kind of zoom in on it in a second. We'll have this tab and we'll have a backing track available for this on our Patreon site. And uh, you can access that by clicking on the card or link in the description. Now with this type of teaching, uh, what we're doing, I'm going to take a D minor 7th. And what we're doing, uh, Buddy Emmons had some things on this. He called them pockets. I'm just going to show you the eight scale degrees of a D minor seventh uh, chord, or the scale that would go with a D minor seventh chord. Now, what we're doing here then, we'll take and number each scale degree, one through eight. Eight is the same as one because it's just the octave. So I'm going to show you at each fret, each string where you would find that note. Also up here it shows you what the notes are. It's just C, D, uh, excuse me, it's D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that's the tones or the notes that you're playing in a D minor seventh uh, scale. And it just happens to be a Dorian scale is what it's called musically. So uh, my thoughts and applications here uh, one of them is that if we're playing a 2-5-1 progression, which I'm going to do some lessons in the future on that, if you're in the key of C major 7, the 2 minor will be D. It's, that'll be a D minor or D minor 7. So we can take this same chart and look where that would be in relationship to the C is the 1 chord, which that would be up at the 12th. We also have one here at the uh, the seventh, or the G chord, which would be the five chord. Now we have that. We can have we can have those at the seventh and five also. So what we're doing then is we're learning to start with the notes of the minors because it seems like a lot of times people have issues or trouble, and I did too when I was learning, and I'm still working on that is finding single notes or single note lines to play over minor chords. So what this tab sheet does, it shows you where each scale position is, what fret, and actually what note you're playing. So the other application would be, if you're playing out of the key of F and uh, you're at the fifth fret, that the relative minor that goes with F or the sixth minor is a D. So you can see again that if you're at the fifth fret, uh, you have quite a few, just about every note, every string on the fifth fret, which is F, will actually play over that D minor chord. So uh, you can see that. Now if you're in the key of F, the chords are F, B flat, and C. Now if that D minor fell on that chord while you're out of the C chord, out at the 12th fret, you can also see here that we could play every note here on the 12th fret would play over a D minor chord. Now that's going to be your preference, how you want to phrase it, but the point being is that if you're playing out of F, the chords are F, B flat, and C, the relative minor for F is, is the 6th minor, which is D. So you see where every note that you could play over a D minor chord would be at, and then you can use that in conjunction of the key you're at. So if you're in F at the fifth fret, then the next chord in the progression was a D minor. You can see any of these scale tones will work. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. So we're using it for to look out, out of a 2-5-1 if you're in a key of C. The chords are C major 7th, G 7th, and D minor. So C is the 1, G is the 5, 
D minor is a two. So of a two, five, one, that's where you would get this D minor. Also, if you're playing out of the key of F, the chords are F, B flat, and C, the six minor or the relative minor that goes with uh, F is a D minor. Or if you're any other progression that you had a D minor fall on, then you can see this uh, tab and you can see, again, like I said, Emmons used the term pockets, which, which is a good term. It, it makes sense. You can see where those, those scale tones fall real close to each other or they fall right at the F chord or they fall right at the C chord. So you can use them and weave them in and out and play some single note lines over those progressions. All right, so let's look at this now with our guitar. Uh, what we're doing is we're trying to learn the fretboard. And so initially, we need to figure out where our D minor chords are. Now on the C6 tuning, you can go to your second fret and you can play seven, six, five, three, and lower that sixth string. And the way I try to remember things, or help me, is your fifth pedal lowers your fifth string, your sixth pedal lowers your sixth string. So we press our sixth pedal, or the one that lowers our six, play seven, six, five, three. Okay, so there's a D minor. Now you can go to your fifth fret, you can play eight, six, five, three. There's a D minor chord. Okay, you can go to your 10th fret, lower your third string, and you can play from six up to two. That's another form of D minor. So that's kind of some of the easier positions, and truthfully, that's just like it is on the uh, E9. Uh, you have a in fret minor if you lower the uh, sixth string on your on your E9 tuning. So anyhow, it's it's kind of it's you're able to apply one neck to the other if you're not used to the C tuning. Now on this uh, chart I gave you. We're first going to look at places where we have the D note. So the one is, the first one is here at your uh, second fret on the seventh string. So that's the first uh, tone of your uh, D minor. So that's a D note. Second fret, seventh string. You've got another one here at your fifth fret on your eighth string. That's another one you'll play out of a lot. And then you have one on your ninth string at the ninth fret. So we have. Okay, now another position you have, you're looking at your uh, tab that I gave you. Uh, on your fourth string, and your fifth fret. That's a one on the first scale degree. All right, we'll use that one. You also have one here at the uh, seventh fret on the fifth string. All right, you also have one on the sixth string at the tenth fret. Okay, so if we're looking at our tab that we have, we notice those will be like the starting positions. So I'll just simply play at the first one. So we go one, two is open, three is at the first fret, sixth string. Your fourth is open, fifth string. Your fifth tone is second fret, fifth string. Your sixth tone is fourth string, uh, second fret. Your seventh tone is your fourth string, third fret. Then it ends back on the uh, octave, or the one, 
third string, second fret. So that's basically what we're doing. Then the next one, you would start out on the uh, fifth fret, eighth string, and then you just simply go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it ends on the octave. Now we can take that one up. And play like that. So what, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm not gonna go over every one of these, but that, that, that gives you an idea. So let's go to the 10th fret, play your sixth string at the 10th fret. That's the first uh, tone of the scale. Now you notice the second tone is on the uh, fifth string at the ninth fret. Now you have a pedal that lowers that fifth string. You have a knee lever that lowers that third string. So the next thing you need to start looking at is that if you don't want to do the a movement with the bar, if you have a pedal or knee lever that affects that string, look at that also. Okay, so in the outset I've said that if you're playing a 2-5-1 progression, now the key is C, the two minor would be D minor. The five would be a G or G altered chord. Then the one chord, the one major seventh would be C. So what you want to look at is where these scale degrees fall for the two minor, because that's what we're concentrating on. Uh, if you're playing this position, you have just about all the notes that you need for the D minor right here at the fifth fret out of the F fret. All right, so the next chord in the progression will be the five. G is right here at the seventh, or it's right here at the fifth fret with your fifth pedal. So there you have two, five, with that fifth pedal, then it resolves to the one. You have a, a one chord right here at the seventh. Okay, if you're doing a, uh, if you want to play out of this position, you notice here at the D fret, the second fret for the two minor. The five, you have a five right here. If you played four, uh, six, nine with your six pedal, that's a G chord. So you have a D minor right here. Five. Then open, lower in that third string, you have a one major seven. Okay. So that's a good position to play for a 2-5-1. And, and we'll, we'll do that on a 2-5-1 lesson, but anyhow, so what we're trying to do is see the closest positions that we can get for our 2-5-1. Okay, so let's go up here to the 12th. That's your one, that's a C. So at the 14th fret, you have the same as down here at the second, just an octave. OK, 
Okay, so then you have the five here. Back to the one. So what you want to do is learn these positions and then try to figure out the licks that you like. And we'll do those in our 251 lesson. Now the next thing I, I talked about too is that if you're playing now the key of F, the chords are F, B flat, and C, the relative minor for F, the sixth minor, is a D minor. So if you were playing F, then it went to the sixth minor. If you look at your chart, you see that you have just about any of these notes here at the fifth fret will work over the D minor. Okay, so you need to learn your positions, and the way that you do this with, the, with this uh, tab is start on the first scale degree, that's simply one, and just go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now uh, I, hope, I think that's a pretty good explanation of what we're trying to do. Let's look at a little bit of this now with the backing track and kind of give you a feel for how you would do that. And I'm simply going to play these, uh, I'll play them in order, a few of them, and then maybe do some that uh, you can play like, try doing like on, a, say here at the fifth fret, if you look at that tab, you notice you have one. So that's one through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Try playing intervals like one, three, five. So it doesn't start sounding so much just like a regular old scale. Or you could play, if you noticed here, you have one, five, seven. Okay, so that sounds more like a lick. Okay. Okay, so then it starts sounding more musical, you know, for lack of a better term, but you're not going to play, or most times you're not going to go. You're not going to just play a, a one through eight <laughs> scale over a chord. You're going to mix that up. So start experimenting on going like one, three, five. And then it starts sounding more like lines that you would play over a chord or a song. Okay, so that makes it more musical. All right, so let's look now. Uh, let's look at the backing track, and I'll play a few of these examples and kind of let you get a feel for how that would work.
work on what they call the intervals of these scales. So practice going up from one to one. Start on the, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So you can play that scale all the way through. And then they, uh, a lot of times they'll, a lot of the teachers will talk about playing the intervals. So you may play the first, the third, and the fifth. Or you may play one, five, seven. So what you're doing there, you're learning positions. You're also doing some ear training. And you can hear those things that, that are more, maybe more appealing to you. Also, they have what they call, uh, in some of the lessons I've seen and I've taught, you have what you call target notes. So you want to try to end this D minor run, if you're playing over the D minor chord, to get you to the next chord. So you want to get notes that lead you into the next chord. So we'll probably do some lessons later on, like when I, when I do the 251 lessons, I'll talk more in depth about that. But for the initial lesson, using this tab type sheet, you're simply, you have a D minor seventh. We're using the C6 tuning. You're going to see where each scale tone is, one through seven. One is simply the first tone. It'd be, it's the same as the eighth, just the octave. And also, as I teach in all my lessons, you get comfortable with this, then start moving it around. So then try, if you want to know where A minor is, then use this, it'd be applicable. Just simply uh, move it up or down the fretboard to where the one would be on the first note of A. It's, then it'd be the same application. So uh, give this a try. And like I said, it's a little different. I use this a lot. I use this also, this type of uh, a tab when I was learning how to play bass and also guitar. So you can see relatively, like I said, when I was, uh, and it's just an aside, but it's people, people learn different. Like when I was in college or whatever, uh, some people need to write lessons out. It's, you can learn it better. Some people need to hear it. Some people need to read it. So there's different ways that uh, make learning and, and again, maybe lack for a better term to make it stick in your mind because, uh, we're all different. We all have different skill levels. We all have different learning, uh, maybe curves or a way that you can apply knowledge. So try this way and then just look at your fretboard. I've seen people actually take tape and like, and put over the frets. And they would simply like at the uh, 12th fret or open fret, they would actually put a piece of tape underneath the fret, underneath the strings, and write these things out. You can do that so as you're playing along on the fretboard, you're physically looking at those numbers. You can do that, that'd be great. I've, and then I have done that too also when I was learning. Or if you've had this like up on your computer screen, as you're playing, you can kind of reference it up and down, and that's that's fine too. So the uh, backing track is just simply like a little uh, bossa nova type rhythm groove, and it's it works really well over a minor sound. So uh, give this a try. Let me know what you think, because if you do like it, or if I get enough good responses out of this, then I'll probably do this over the two five one progression. I'll show you the different positions and different kinds of scales you can play over the G altered chord and show you the notes that you can play over the C major seven. So, and, that, and that's kind of what we're going to build up to anyhow. So we'll either do that on the uh, regular tab or we'll do it with this uh, system where we're simply writing out the scale tones, numbering them. All right, so give us a try and let me know what you think. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And uh, like I said at the outset, just let me know if you think this is something that's beneficial to you. I'll do some more of these tabs like this. Uh, and also, if, if you want the tab and backing track and uh, have this practice rhythm track, you can go to our Patreon site for that. Click on the card or the tab in the description. That'll get you over to that. And if you want to check out the equipment that we're using, you can go to the Amazon link and the description that'll get you also more information on the equipment that we're using. 
Uh, we appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, you hit the subscribe or the like button. That would be a good thing. We, we always appreciate seeing the feedback that we're getting and seeing how many people are following us on our uh, YouTube channel. So that's a good thing for us. Uh, as always, we just hope you are enjoying the lessons. Like I said, this one is on the C6 neck. Uh, I've got quite a few people that are playing the C tuning, and I enjoy it, and I'm going to share some of the knowledge that I have on it for those players that are interested in the C6. So, uh, Jacob and I just appreciate you. We thank you for tuning in, watching our videos, and keep picking.